Yeah, this happened. Hey, what was the name of that canyon that we were trying to drive into yesterday? Dry Canyon or? Uh, Nine Mile Canyon? No, we were on Nine Mile Canyon. Gate, well, uh, Prickly Pear Canyon. Well, <laughs> we were on Nine Mile Canyon Road here in Utah and we came to Prickly Pear Canyon Public Access Road. And first we, we saw it and we kind of drove by it <clears throat> and then we could see where the road went up Prickly Pear Canyon. It looked like pretty decent road. So we turned around and we went back and we turned down it. And <laughs> and uh, just after we started in, the the uh, road closed in with brush and a tree tree you know willows and ironwood and nasty stuff nasty stuff and I thought well you know it looked like pretty soft stuff so I figured well we'll just we can just push through this little segment right here and then because we had seen that the road looked good just. I don't know, a couple hundred yards ahead from what we saw from the road. Anyways, we started down through there and we were kind of pushing on through and it didn't seem too bad, although I didn't like it. Yeah? Yeah. <laughs> then the truck did this over a little rise and we could see what was down below. And basically the road was washed out. Yeah. And we couldn't go any further. And now I had to back up through what I just came through. So the first thing Linda and I did was we got out with a machete and uh, we uh, hacked and cleared and and got it all, you know, looked pretty good. We we spent, I don't know, maybe a half an hour or 45 minutes just hacking at branches uh, to get back out again. But the thing is, I couldn't see to back up because it was so, I couldn't see in my mirrors. So I was just kind of aiming for Linda's legs. She was kind of walking and guiding the tire. But of course, it, it, I kept going crooked, you know, mm -hmm. and it took us, I don't know, maybe well, an hour. There was hour? Big, big slabs of uh, rock that he couldn't, you know, go over and had to avoid those. That you were sort of going up and then had to go back down. And Anyways. I ended up backing into the bushes a couple of times pretty darn good and doing some damage to the paint on the car and scraping up the trailer. I think a lot of it, probably 60 or 70 percent of it is going to buff out, but you saw what it looks like. I got some work to do. Uh, Linda's got some work to do. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. It's not my name. <laughs> thought we'd share that with you. Sometimes stuff happens. Well, Linda and I are currently camped down on Nine Mile Canyon Road. It's uh, northeast of Price, Utah. And they call it Nine Mile Canyon. It's actually about 40 miles long, and it is one end to the other, places where you can stop and see ancient rock art, pictoglyphs, petroglyphs. Petroglyphs. Uh, yeah, petroglyphs. petroglyphs. There's a difference between a pictoglyph and a petroglyph. What is it? Well, petroglyphs are carved into the rock or chipped into the rock because Hawaii has a lot of petroglyphs. And pictoglyphs are... Uh, Painted on the rock, aren't they? Yeah. Yeah, that's the difference. <laughs> Anyways, this is a beautiful place and I want to tell you a little more about it. But first, let's go down and look at some rock art and then I'll tell you more about Nine Mile Canyon, what you can do and where you need to go to stay. The art along this canyon was done by the Fremont, what they call the Fremont Indians. They're actually named after the man who researched them. But it was, they were here between 950 and 1200 AD, they believe. So that's the uh, time period on this art. Well, the canyon is literally 40 miles of this beautiful, beautiful landscape. And a lot of the rock art is, you know, has turnouts and, you know, parking areas where you can go and see it. A lot of it you can just find on your own. They say bring binoculars because you never know where you're going to see it. 
just kind of peer at the hillsides and check it out. Well, down this trail is supposed to be a big buffalo. Let's go find it. Oh, I guess so. Wow. Yeah. Looks like it measures about uh, two feet tall from the front front legs to the top of the hump. This looks to be about three feet. Don't know. In Hawaii, you see a lot of these concentric patterns. And they don't know exactly what they mean, but in Hawaii, they think this means generations. Don't know. Here's an antelope or a deer. I think a person could easily spend several days in Nine Mile Canyon, which once again is 40 miles long, looking for a rock art. Right here, uh, up there. Up weird there, there's some. One looks like a big water um, container. I'm going to follow the trail down here and see what else we find. <laughs> Obviously, there's something or this trail wouldn't be here. Over here, Rick. Lucky. Oh, yeah. This fell out or somewhere. I don't know. Maybe it's, it was sitting right there. I don't know. Well, obviously, this is more exciting to see in person. So I'm going to go ahead and, uh, you know, cut this little clip short. And when we see another good one, we'll we'll show it to you. Well, this is pretty interesting, though. This one's got a date, August 19, 1867. And maybe you can make out the name. Beautiful pictoglyphs. Here's a horseman. Beautiful bull. And that is, that's what you call a pictoglyph, right, Linda? I think so, yeah. It's made with... Um, with okra. Yeah. Paint and okra. Or... And... That's obviously a space alien. Most of the road through Nine Mile Canyon is paved until you get to the end, and then uh, it branches off into dirt roads and goes up the canyon, up to Cottonwood Canyon and some others. You have to be careful because of the oil company trucks. And when you get to that dirt road, uh, some of it is one lane, and you may have a truck coming the other way. I don't think you'd want to get caught towing a vehicle up in that area. Now this is an old ranch that's been turned into a roadside picnic area. That's the original well, old hand dug well. I can't see the bottom, but it's kind of bright sunlight out here. I don't know how deep that is. But right next to it and to the right here is the old hearth, hearth. From an old cabin I used to sit here probably a lot of fine meals cooked on that fire now i don't know what this is this is probably sh just below shoulder height for me it's heavy cement and then on this end there's a doorway all wired up here but it goes in a lot further than what you see above ground. I'm thinking 
maybe a root cellar it goes down you know below ground level maybe a root cellar maybe an old ice house or something your guess is as good as mine there I can show you where Nine Mile Canyon is up here is Vernal Utah this is Highway 191 coming down to Price Utah and this is Nine Mile let's see here this is Nine Mile Canyon yeah right here so you can get to it out of Price or Wellington down here you can also get it to it from the north end from Mighton and it shows it as being all dirt road but most of this was paved there was a couple of miles of dirt just before you got down to Nine Mile Canyon and this is all paved they paved it though a few years ago this is all paved until you get to the end here there is a couple miles of dirt when you come from the north but it was it was good road all the way beautiful area and there's lots of exploring you can do on the back roads as for camping not very much there's only a few campsites in this whole area but you can stay outside in Wellington or Price or up here in the Vernal area and day trip down to here and there's rock art like they say there's rock art for 40 miles it's well known for the Fremont Indian rock art so if you're into that this would be a good trip as you drive through the canyon here there's numerous pullouts they don't look like much of a pullout but there are like there's one coming up here right on the right right here this wide spot here but there's pullouts all, all along and it gives you the opportunity to pull over and then go back into the coolies here, the canyons and look for rock art. What do you make of that? I don't know. Once again, the dot pattern. Yeah, and down where Linda's pointing is dots. Yeah, down here's a man. That was really unusual. Whatever. What is it? What is it? This is a beautiful, beautiful country, but we're actually cruising around looking for a place to camp because where we're at, we're getting the dust off the road, so we were looking to move. It doesn't look promising though. So I can't recommend this canyon for camping at all. There's just a couple of spots and that's it. However, for day tripping in here, you could actually spend a couple days in here or you could probably spend a couple of weeks in here if, you wanna, if you're into Native American rock art. And just the hiking and exploring you can do, there's a lot of it and it's all open for doing that too. This is a beautiful place. This is just a uh, abandoned homestead down along Nine Mile Canyon Road. Hard to tell if this was a cabin or a, a barn. Lots of old equipment laying around. Let's go take a look at it though. Who knows what that was. Some kind of shed here. Let's go look inside.
Well, over here is a very old mattress. So I'm guessing somebody lived in here at one time or another. Over on the right side, old flue pipe for for a stove or a heater, wood burning heater. This is looking in the second door. It's an old mattress there. Yeah, somebody lived here. Up on the ceiling in the corner over there was another uh, stove pipe. Different life, wasn't it? What is this? Oh, this is like the part of a caterpillar or bulldozer or something. See the uh, wheels or what would have been for the, the tracks? Yep. I know one of you knows what this is. Another old log cabin. A lot of equipment laying around. What's this laying on the ground? You know what this is? Part of a horse's harness. Maybe for a team or something. I don't know. Leather straps laying in the sun there. Some part of a fuel tank there. But who wouldn't want to live here? Look at this. The property is still private owned. But the owners aren't interested in it. They're not even farming it. There is cattle though. Somebody's running cattle out here. It is good for that. What do we have over here? Yeah, a little paint, a little Bondo. Oh, cool. Pretty neat stuff. In a minute, I want to take you to the house across the street, across the street, across the road. <laughs> Look at that, it's all stone. Let's go take a look at this old house. Look at this place though. It's all built out of sandstone. This, uh, just judging by the door there, the height of the door, which is low, and the wood in the windows, I'm guessing this is probably um, 1870 to 1900 for a build date. Look at the arch over each, over the windows and over the doors. What a cool place. And like I said, what a cool place to live. Well, it appears I've lost Linda somewhere out there in the bush. I have to wait around. <laughs> I can't even see her. She's out there somewhere. Well, one thing we've learned about the Indians here in the Southwest is that they lived very well. They were not heathens. <laughs> they were smart. They built really comfortable houses or habitation sites that were warm in the winter and cool in the summer. They grew their crops, their corn and their squash and their beans. And uh, they, they lived well. They really did. What, Linda? Show the field down here. Yeah, because it was probably all planted before. The field below us here, which is now in nice fertile grass, 
was probably all. Corn and beans and squash and probably fruit trees, too. They were known for that. Yeah, they lived well. Well, it's late. It's dinner time. We missed coffee time. Now it's almost beer time. Oh, wait, it's... It's not that late. I had the lens cap on, sorry. <laughs> yeah, it's still daylight, but it's late. <laughs> Heading back to camp. Now I know the light's not right, but this is my last chance to shoot this. We're on our way out and I need to get this before we go. Uh, Last night, Linda and I were looking at the uh, cliffside across from us here, and we noticed a um, stacked rocks. And take a look at how the center of this video here, of this screen, there's, it's really difficult to get up there. What this is, is a granary. It's where the Indians were have, would have stored their grain. You see that? Right there. There you go. Pretty cool, huh? Well, one last thing about the camping on in Nine Mile Canyon, which is 40 miles long, <laughs> is, uh, yeah, if you're in a van or a small trailer like ours, uh, you there are pullouts where you can spend the night. It's not going to be a campsite, but it is a spot where you can stop and, and get a, a decent night's rest because things are real quiet in here. This is not a popular place. So anyways, I encourage you to come down, take a look, get a look at the beautiful artwork that's here. We only showed you a tiny bit of it, but you could, like I said, you could spend days. Yeah, you could literally spend days and you're welcome to poke around and go up and do a lot of hiking. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, look it up online. There's way more information and, um, than what we know. <laughs> you know, that's one thing about the way Linda and I travel is we just we don't plan anything and we end up stumbling on stuff like we stumbled on nine mile canyon just trying to get out of the high winds yesterday right right do what linda said look it up because <laughs> we happen to know that there's uh you can get online and there's information on this and 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 the history and and places to go you can map it out you can go find the, the nicer places to see anyways hope you enjoyed this video if you did Thumbs up. Thumbs up. Yeah. And Subscribe. Please, that's right. We'll see you around. Woo! Cool. Woo! Woo! <laughs> hey, you want to see how bright this is?